This tutorial will discuss what you need to know to retrieve key value pairs from Oracle NoSQL database. Let's introduce some of the Oracle NoSQL database terminology that will be helpful when using the API. In Oracle NoSQL database, you can retrieve data by specifying all or part of the key. The value, think record, is returned. The value is a byte array of any length and can be anything you want, a username, an address, a serialized record, an MRI image, an XML document, a directory pointer to something that's external to Oracle NoSQL database. The entire collection of key value paired is referred to as the KV store, think database. A partition is a hashed set of records and is stored based on the major key. More on that later. A shard is a set of partitions, also referred to as a replication group. I will use the term shard here. Replication factor represents the number of times a specific key value pair is stored in an Oracle NoSQL database. A storage node represents a computer. It has one or more CPUs, memory, and storage. Before we look at the API methods for retrieving key value pairs, let's take a look at this diagram showing two instances of our application in blue. Why do we have two instances? Well, Oracle NoSQL database already provides you with no single point of failure and high availability for the database. But we have decided that if the computer running one of our applications goes down, the other instance can pick up the load. We can also optionally add other instances of the application as needed at any time. Each application instance, which of course can be multi-threaded, simply needs to link in kvclient.jar as explained in the Eclipse development tutorial. Oracle NoSQL database implements a key value data model. The diagram here also shows a number of storage nodes. A key point here is that the API calls you make have no knowledge of which shard the key value you wish to retrieve is actually stored. That's what I mean by transparent sharding. Because of this, we can develop our applications using KV Lite before testing and deploying with a much larger number of shards. The intelligent driver determines which shard and which node to efficiently and quickly retrieve data with minimal communication. Before we can retrieve key value pairs from an Oracle NoSQL database or perform any create, read, update, delete, CRUD operations, we need to open the KV store. The method getStore off of the static class KV store factory creates the handle and opens the store. You call close when you are finished with your database access, just like you would do with a file. You will frequently use the handle created to perform create, read, update, and delete operations from your KV store. When you call the getStore method, you pass an instance of a KV store config object. You pass in the KV store name and at least one host name and port for an active node in the system. You might want to specify more than one in case that node is not active when the client application is started. In addition, you can configure the KV store handle to use the specified consistency or durability policy as the default. For example, I can create a KV store config instance passing in the store name DB store and a host name called hostname using the port 5000. Here we see some test code where DB store is the name of the key value store and I'm specifying a host name of Boston 1 with a port of 5000. Now that we have a KV store handle, let's take a look at the get method used to retrieve key value pairs. You pass in a key to the get method. Let's assume we have a simple single part key specified as 101. The value could be a timestamp, for example, part of a web log or a credit card number or a compound key. To obtain the value, think reading a record, you simply pass in the string 101 
and you are returned a value version object. You can then use the value version object to get the value. In our example, the value is a string which we will simply print. But as I mentioned earlier, the value can be anything you want, including a serialized record. The value version object also has the get version method. The get version method returns a token which is used to determine if the key value pair has been updated since the value version was obtained. It is frequently used on update, the method is called put if version, to ensure you are updating the key value pair based on the latest version of a record. You can choose to update the key value pair if and only if the version number matches the version you passed. Consistency is optionally used to retrieve the key value pair if and only if the replication node chosen by the driver is within the specified time increment of the master. When a key value pair is updated on a master, there is a very short increment of time where the replica lags behind the master. For those use cases that care about this lag, you can specify no time lag. In other words, you must have the most up-to-date data that is referred to as absolute consistency. More on that later. If you don't care about consistency, true for a large number of use cases, then don't specify the consistency parameter, which is the default, or specify consistency none required for the parameter. Reads are sent to the appropriate replica for the shortest expected response time. If multiple replicas are eligible, the driver will do load balancing between the replicas. I want to call your attention again to the get method. Notice there is nothing in the API call to suggest there are multiple shards involved, transparent sharding. This call can run on KB Lite or a much larger configuration with multiple shards for improved read-write throughput. Let's take a look at some sample code using the major key 101. We use the key class to create the key that will be passed to the get method using the KB store handle store. We display the value by getting at the value object of the value version class. That's the first get value method and retrieve the byte array using the get value method of the value class. An important part of any database application, no matter what your database management system, is the database design. Oracle NoSQL Database allows you to have a flexible database design with structured and unstructured data. Let's discuss major and minor keys. We will take a look at a financial services company that provides, among other services, credit cards. We are going to keep track of all purchases made by a given credit card holder. The first two characters identify the subject area of interest. For example, CC stands for credit card. With this approach, we can easily add new subject areas. For example, the result of an unplanned corporate merger of two financial services company could result in other services being provided, such as brokerage. In this table, I identified the subject area by BK. The BK is the first component of the major key. I have a single entry for BK, but there are actually several different types of keys for the brokerage area that we can add. Let's focus on the major and minor keys in the credit card CC area. Looking at the first six rows in the table, the first full key is account information for this credit card. That would include address, phone, email address, and secondary email address. The major key is CC and the second part is the 20 digit credit card number. Although the designer could use various techniques to shorten the length of the credit card number, such as hashing. The minor key is the string account info, which will just be the record type. In the Hello World app that we just looked at, the major key was a single component, 101. Here the major key has two components, the string CC, followed by the actual credit card number. Minor keys are optional in Oracle NoSQL database. The first six rows in the table all have the same major key, CC account number, followed by a minor key. 
We have chosen in the credit card application to have all credit card information for a given cardholder located in the same shard. We did this by using the CC number and the credit card number as the major key. All key value pairs that have the same major key will be located in the same shard. Again, I added the credit card as the first component of the major key for flexibility. Let's look at some of the other minor keys. The credit card holder has an encrypted password stored for quick access and is stored as a separate key value pair. A key value pair is stored for each and every credit card transaction. For a given month, there could be a few or as many as several thousand transactions. The transactions are stored with a three-part minor key. Here I have indicated purchase for transaction. Uh, in actuality, we'd probably store TXN as the first component of the minor key. Each month, a statement is created by reading all of the purchases for a given month. All transactions are stored for 24 months. After 24 months, the oldest month's data is archived. We always have no more than 24 months of data available for a given credit card holder. Once the application to create the statement is run, we store the statement with a minor key STMT followed by a second component representing the year and month, four digits. Whenever a payment is received, a key value pair is stored with the three-part minor key payment, followed by the year, year, month, month, and timestamp. The way we have done our key design for a given credit card holder, all of this information will be stored on the same shard. Concurrent retrievals will go to any of the replication nodes for that shard. Finally, the minor key approval is very important and needs to be accessed extremely quickly and likely often. The value contains data central for all transaction approvals. Simply stated, a purchase is approved if the credit card is not considered stolen and the purchase amount will not cause the credit card holder to exceed their credit limit. The selection of major and minor keys is important for fast access. Each purchase or credit will insert a single purchase or credit key value pair and update the approval key value pair for this credit card holder. With this schema design, all of the key value pairs with the same credit card number will be located on the same shard. Another way to think of a shard is as a slice or partitioning of the data. This partitioning is all done transparently by Oracle NoSQL database. The retrieval API methods, for example, by specifying the major and minor keys, information that is known at the time a transaction is to be approved, one can quickly get at the approval record for a given credit card holder. In addition, the Oracle NoSQL database API has multiple methods which can quickly do key range searches. For example, we can very quickly get at all the purchases made by a credit card holder in a particular month. Let's now take a look at these methods in a little more detail. These are all methods called by using the KV store handle. Both multi-get and multi-get keys returns a sorted map, which is in memory. With the major and minor keys we just discussed in the credit card application, we could use multi-get to retrieve all of the purchases made by a cardholder in a given month. We do this by passing in a key range object. If using the key range class with the get and get iterator methods, you must use a full path for the major key. If you don't know the full path of the major key, then you should use the store iterator methods. If you want to know what minor keys exist for a full major key, you can use multi get keys. You could also do a range search specifying the major key and perform a range search on the minor key. I will use this approach to iterate over all credit card statements that exist for a given credit card holder. Once displayed, perhaps on a web page, the cardholder selects the statement they wish to see in more detail. 
Note they may not see two years worth of data since they may be a brand new credit card holder. The multi-get and multi-get keys methods returns a sorted map. If there is potentially a large number of keys or key value pairs to be returned, you may want to use the iterator method to avoid an out of memory Java condition. Use the store iterator method to retrieve key or key value pairs specifying a range of keys of interest. Optionally, you can retrieve every key value pair in the store. Now let's take a look at, at an example. Here we use the multi-get method with a key range to obtain the credit card holder transactions during the month of May. The transactions are returned in a sorted map, which is in memory. If you expect a large number of return records, you may want to use the multi-get iterator method. For, for more information, please see the Java doc. Thank you for watching this Oracle NoSQL database tutorial on reading key value pairs. Look for other existing Oracle NoSQL database tutorials. If you have a suggested topic, please let us know by posting a comment on this site or sending an email to ron.cohen at oracle.com.